Welcome to Moby Talk, the worst podcast on the internet. Today I am receiving uh, Find Me Offline, a meme creator that I discovered on Instagram. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Uh, so when you are ready, tell us all that we need to know. All right. Um, hi, I'm Find Me Offline. Um, I've been making memes for like maybe two years now, almost two years or mm -hmm. a little more than two years. And um, yeah, just make memes. Um, I recently graduated college, so I got that going for nice. me. Nice. And yeah, I'm excited to be here, man. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. So, uh, do you make memes uh, elsewhere than Instagram or are you Instagram only? So when I first started, I would sort of post them all over the place just mm -hmm. to see if I could get as many, as much attention on the memes I was making as possible. Mm -hmm. But my main, like the, it's the easiest, it's easiest to post on Instagram. So that's kind of what stuck. Okay. And that's what makes it, I think the easiest to interact with your audience through like stories and messaging and comments and stuff. So It's mainly Instagram, but I do have a Twitter and I do have like a Reddit and all that. Oh, I just okay. don't. I just don't post as often there. I see. Uh, what uh, what what did you graduate? Uh, what was your your diploma? Oh, I I just finished studying mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Like it's this. hard to balance memes and studying, but it's it's doable. Yeah, I guess. Except if you're studying memes, probably. Um, yeah, I I heard I saw like some video about a meme university, but it yeah, so it that's, was yeah. like a fake thing, right? Oh, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know really because uh, no. I've seen that a few people were like meme experts. Now I, I've seen that this chick that works on Tumblr. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, she's like meme historian or or whatever or and um, yeah that it's um, it's maybe uh, um, like a, a new career path I don't know yeah it's definitely a viable career option like if people want to go into memes and like well I wouldn't call it memes I'd probably just call it like marketing or something you know. I mean, it's it's entertainment basically. Yeah, which is not really a new thing. Quite quite yeah. the, quite the opposite. Yeah, it's just like a new trend in entertainment and yeah. marketing and stuff. Yeah, with yeah. like branding stuff. Yeah, it remind me. It reminds me of that uh, that gaming school that opened uh, in. I think it was in China, or maybe oh, it was. Yeah, in, that in, like, one is. Or maybe it was, that one was Taiwan real. or Hong Kong, and but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Yeah, that's absolutely legit. Uh, that's so, pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems pretty crazy, but uh, here we are, and uh, with uh, the the growth of like those corporate accounts like Wendy's or Tinder or or whatever who use memes as a means of advertisement now. Uh, oh yeah, I think it it probably will be seen more and more as a as a legitimate uh, career option. Yeah, definitely. I guess, but um, on, on the same time, it's it is a little weird because uh, you cannot really create uh, a meme because what defines a meme it's the fact that it's it's spread and a lot of people are you know passing it around and and modifying it and and so you cannot really be a meme creator. It doesn't really make sense. But you you can yeah. like use memes as, as an inspiration. For your yeah. for, for what you create, but uh, it's um yeah it's uh it's kind of a weird uh, point in time where the definition is of meme is like changing, and uh, it's still not uh, it's still not clear uh, what um what exactly it will become in the future. Yeah, that's true. It's it really is true that you can't like create a meme from from nowhere. Like you always get inspiration. It's kind of with anything like you're always inspired, but by something else, like most most memes, even though they're like even the most original meme creators, like they still take some kind of comedy trope 
or like images and stuff from other places it's not yeah. from scratch you know yeah yeah i mean it, it happens but it's it's really rare uh and, it's it's and, like a spectrum yeah and and yeah and <laughs> the, the the base definition of a meme is that a lot of people are uh you know passing it around and and sharing it so uh you can you can never know when something is going to become a meme you can only know when it's already a meme uh, yeah that's but, true but yeah there, there are some exceptions like for example uh one exception that uh is recent uh, has really uh had a, a quite a widespread is uh that boy i don't know if you remember that uh frog on a unicycle picture yes oh shit it's that boy oh shit what up that started mm -hmm. that started from nothing that's quite rare but uh it did the, the the origin is basically you know it's not like all these memes who come from a tv show or uh, or i don't know a song so so the frog like someone created it from scratch i don't know uh, like where'd that image come from i i have no idea i i i remember when uh, the meme was um Popular. I tried to search for the origin and I couldn't find anything. Maybe mm -hmm. now, maybe now it is known, but uh, to my knowledge, it was never really found. Maybe it was. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's may it's like the um, the meme man face, uh, which was <laughs> uh, which comes from a, a thread on 4chan about uh, 3D modeling, and some dude uh, said, uh, "Oh, uh, here's a here's a." Uh, 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 you know, an exercise that I that I did to try and treat three D model uh, human models. I did this face. What you guys think? And um, and so there was um, the the guy who created Special Meme Fresh, uh, who was in that thread. He saved the picture and then he used it as his uh, avatar. And then and <laughs> and now it's everywhere. Uh, so uh, he made fun of the poor guy's project. Kinda, I guess. <laughs> But, but yeah, and uh, so, so yeah, it's um, there's a, a huge uh, spont spontaneity uh, component, like uh, the, yeah, that's true. In a lot of in a lot of memes and in a lot of the best memes, uh, it starts like suddenly uh, from something that was not intended to be humorous or uh, yeah, that's you know, true. It's uh, the recon the the recontextualization is what makes it funny and uh, the best most of the best memes are are like that um it's uh, I, I don't know like i'm i'm thinking of a bullshit example but epic sax guy from the eurovision for example mm -hmm. it was exactly like that it was a a snippet of a, of a of a song that was not intended to be funny but it completely blew up and it was like one of the memes of the year in, uh, yeah, I think it was 2013. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I remember that. Or you know, Doge, which was just a, a picture of a dog uh, taken yeah. by, by some Japanese guy. Yeah, I uh, remember the. Um, I was gonna say that the um, the frog, the who that boy. Yeah, it's sort of it's sort of like reminded me of these like abstract sort of memes like it was it's similar to doge it's like a creature uh -huh. and it's similar to the to the wednesday frog uh -huh. it's like sort of a creature and it's but it's also like really abstract and ironic and it's it's not like a normal comedy joke you know it's it's like really abstract and yeah. it's funny that you thought of the meme man face too when when we were talking about the frog yeah i mean that's that that's uh that's also uh, one of the characteristics that help a, a meme uh get around is that it's really simple so um it's really simple to, for uh, it's it's really easy for it to get into your head and it's easy yeah, it's really true. easy for for people like to modify it or insert it into, yeah. in different contexts and shit um probably uh the, the one of the biggest early examples is the the cat that says uh, I can has cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah, that that was the the first thing that got really big more than ten years ago. But basically, the first internet meme was uh, like a little gif of a dancing baby. It's just called dancing. It's just called dancing baby. And is it uh, this baby doing like salsa? 
I don't, I don't really know because I'm, I'm not uh, acquainted with dance types. But uh, he's but like. But is it a 3D render thing? Yeah, it's a 3D render. Oh yes, I know that baby. It's a little baby in a diaper, and he's like turning, <laughs> yeah. turning around and putting his arm up, and that. I know was, exactly what you're talking about. And that is the first documented internet meme. Uh, it was in the big, really. It was in the first days of the World Wide Web in the early 90s. And uh, it was a huge sensation. It was featured on like TV shows like Ali McBeal. I remember it was in Ali McBeal. I don't know if you know that, but it's um, it's a, a, an early 90s TV show about some lawyer chick. And uh, mm -hmm. and it was quite popular at the time uh, with other uh, with other TV shows that were popular, uh, like Seinfeld and uh, Friends. That's pretty, that's and, pretty cool. I didn't know about memes back then. Uh, yeah, that's that's really that's the first uh, internet meme because memes have always been a thing uh, for for as long as civilization existed. Um, yeah, that's true. But the first internet memes that was passed around on the internet was was this little dancing baby, this little GIF of a dancing baby. Uh, there was like also sentences like "Hello World," which come from the the world of uh, computer programming. So a lot of yeah early users of the internet were, uh, you know, people who worked with computers. So um, we, a lot of people remember that one. But uh, yeah, there was a... And then there was the explosion of like the, the second wave of, of internet memes, like Badger, 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 uh, that, that little video from Newgrounds. Cows, cows, cows. Uh, sad fingers, uh, stuff like yeah. that. Newgrounds was a really fertile terrain of uh, the the ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny, yeah, that's like that was like ten years after the dancing baby, but that was when memes really became a thing. And uh, do you know the song "Pork and Beans" by Weezer? Uh, I I think they they made like the music video. I remember I was like I was pretty young when it came out. It was two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. And it was like the music video was all just internet memes, and it was like the YouTube era of memes. Okay, that was a pretty cool moment in history. Yeah, yeah, or meme um, history. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Charlie bit my finger and all that. Yeah, it was all that was in like in the music video. Nice. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't see the the, the video, but uh, I can. You should check it out. It's a cool video. Sure, I will. I can, I can imagine. Uh, so, um, uh, I, oh, I wanted to ask you a question, but I've forgotten. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, damn. No problem, man. <laughs> I'm just glad to be here. I have a question for you, actually, sure. if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so how did you find out about me? Like what meme did you see of mine or who told you about my page? Oh, um, I don't remember because I've been following you for quite some time now. Really? Uh, yeah, I think at least a year. Oh, cool. And, um, it was, it was, I think, uh, it was... And uh, um, a creator called Surreal Slaps. I'm not sure if it's a creator or, or, or a curator, but that. Oh I, yes. I think that was who introduced uh, you to me, or maybe it was just Instagram Explorer. Uh, I was like browsing memes, and like 95 percent of them uh, are absolute trash. So when you see uh -huh. when you see good stuff, it always stands out. <laughs> and I remember that I loved your uh, your profile picture with uh, the colors and uh, the style that reminds me of um, Y2K aesthetics, you know, with the, yeah. the shimmering uh, silver uh, background. And uh, oh, that's good to know then. It, it, really, I was, it really caught I was my sort eye. Of like, I was sort of like, um, like wondering if I should, if it was time to change my profile picture because. I've had it for a while. Well, it's uh, but it seemed to work. It it's really eye catching. It really it really caught my eye. I thought it was uh, I thought it was um, really aesthetic, and um, it, it was it was funny because most of the the meme accounts uh, had like absolutely trash, um, you know, profile pictures, 
uh, mm -hmm. with usually a deep fried meme or uh, some so some weird ass uh, picture. And so you, yours really did stand out. And I think, um, I don't know if you want to change it for sure, change it. But uh, I think it, it, this one really works in my opinion. Yeah. Well, if I change it, I'll probably look for something like that. Something that's like eye catching and like well-made, you know? Mm, yeah. I don't want to have like some anime character mm. or anything like that. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the way I the way I see my meme page too is not just about like it's definitely about memes because I love making memes, uh -huh. but it, I also like hopefully in the future when I grow and stuff I see it more of a brand as well, not of just course. memes. Yeah, of course. It and is. so I wanted to sort of like start off by being a brand and like branding my stuff and having like a good name and a good like you know the find me offline is sort of a catchy phrase so i, mm -hmm. I yeah. thought about all that when i started yeah 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 that's uh that's a really good way of looking at things in my opinion and um uh, i wish i uh, i wish i did that uh in the beginning too but uh you're uh you're i, right I like track. chad mojito it's it's a good yeah oh well it's a good that name. was yeah yeah i um I worked on that for uh, for uh, quite a few for quite a long time uh, before I uh, before I settled on that and it was the mm -hmm. it was the fruit of months of uh, of reflection and and drafts and uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, hard labor yeah kinda uh, what made you decide to start a meme page how how did it all begin so I started I guess I started realizing that I was looking at a lot of memes myself. Mm -hmm. And I would like spend a lot of time just looking at memes and everyone, like all my friends and stuff, they were all like, you're the meme guy. Like you're <laughs> the one that reposts or like sends us all the memes. And like when all my friends would send me stuff, I had already always seen it. Yeah. And, and so I started to, and, and then I think the very first time I considered it was my brother. He brought it up. He's like, hey, we should start a meme page. Like, we have so many memes. We should just repost. Because he, he likes j reposting more. Uh -huh. So, and he always sends me good memes, too. Shout out to my brother. Mm -hmm. So, so he was the first person that sort of brought up the idea. And we sort of tried to start a meme page together, but it never really worked out. Because... I was just very lazy and like posting and, and it, it just, mm -hmm. it was, it just didn't happen naturally, you know? Yeah. So, but then, I mean, I was still into memes and I would still like look at a lot of memes. And one day I just, and another friend or like my, my roommates at the time, they sort of brought it up. They're like, dude, you should start a meme page. Like you're really funny. And like you, you always look at memes and you're always like have the best memes. And I was like, damn, okay, I guess I should. <laughs> and I really, I really liked sort of, I thought about reposting memes, but I mm. preferred much more to make my own memes because I started also realizing that I had like a couple meme ideas. Oh. I would like see a meme and I, then I'd like come up with other ideas for it and be like, damn, I wish someone would make this. Oh, yeah. And so, and so that's sort of how I got into it. Okay. Um, I wasn't called Find Me Offline at first. I, I just came up with some random name. I don't, I don't even remember what it was. But it mm -hmm. took me like a um, couple weeks to to find a good name. Okay, that's nice. Um... And it it took me a while to find the right apps to to edit and stuff. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, do you, would you, would you, uh, I don't even know if you've thought about this or not, but would you want to, uh, make this part of your career or may like maybe your whole career or do you prefer, uh, for it to stay as like a, a hobby? So I think definitely right, right this second, it's more of a hobby and it's just something I like to do like for fun. Mm -hmm. Cause I, it's like more of a break from like engineering or like other work that i that i would do but i definitely if and i had an opportunity to like have a side job or like a part-time job where i can just make memes remotely for some for another page for example i would mm -hmm. so do that like 
just to make some extra money that would be awesome and get some experience too that would be really cool but for now it's definitely not something that i'm considering like seriously a career or anything like that what uh, what are you considering if it's not uh private sorry what are you considering if it's not too private oh oh i just want to work for like a, a as a mechanical engineer that's uh, Doing, going with like my my career path with what i studied and stuff in college sure uh, maybe it's just me but mechanical engineer sounds a little a little vague to me i have a hard time figuring out what kind of job that would be maybe you can yeah yeah, yeah. um mechanical engineering is like well it is really broad so out of all the engineering stuff there's like chemical engineering yeah. civil engineering they just like make buildings and roads and stuff and infrastructure and so mechanical engineering is like kind of a lot of aspects of engineering put together and um, but it's mostly like say so we study like we study other either like systems or machines uh -huh. so like in systems for example it would be like uh if you have air conditioning in a building mm -hmm. then that's like a really common um mechanical engineering job like most mechanical engineers or most um air conditioning sort of jobs are for mechanical like mechanical engineers do those so you would um, be like for example designing engines for cars or stuff like that or yeah that's also sort of a systems thing but and it for cars are sort of systems and machines it's like a mix of both uh -huh. so that's kind yeah. of what it is yeah. at the end of the day and you can do a lot of stuff like i i personally like to do products Mm -hmm. like to make products and stuff so i want to go into more like um everyday products and and customer products that people use i don't i'm not that big of a fan of cars but i think working for a car in a car company would be cool too um it's just i'm not super passionate about cars themselves yeah i get it so maybe i don't know robots yeah robots are cool <laughs> you, you what what uh, like um for um, smart smart homes or stuff like that, or no, I, I guess it's more, maybe more uh, electronics. Yeah, uh, um, that's so like smart home stuff is much more just hardware and like computer science stuff. Yeah, but robotics, the biggest thing in robotics, I'd say, is like meant for manufacturing. So in like assembly lines and stuff. Now instead of humans, it's going to oh, be yeah. like mostly yeah. robots, oh, and yeah. it's all just okay. automated. So that's like the biggest industry, I'd say. I from what I know, probably the biggest market for robots. I don't know. I I'm not sure if I'm right or not, but it seems to me that the biggest uh, market that seems to be yet untapped for robots uh, and that would probably be really successful is um, food for uh like food robots for for the home yeah like um i don't know you put the ingredients and the robots makes you a milkshake or i don't know stuff like that you know mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people are um uh you know busy and uh or you know uh a lot of people i know don't really have the the time to uh make food themselves or or the knowledge or the motivation but also a lot of these people are concerned about you know uh the the ingredients the what goes inside their uh, their meals the preservatives and uh, all that shit and uh, mm -hmm. so uh i think if there was like a, some kind of robots that would make the, your food for you at home but with the ingredients that you would have chosen yourself and you know exactly what goes inside that would probably be a, a, a big market for people who are busy but health conscious yeah there's probably like a good cost effective solution for that to be made yet um i've heard i've heard about robots cooking robots mm -hmm. they yeah. exist there's like a company in california and they they're a pizza delivery company or they're like a pizza company like pizza hut mm -hmm. but the ro they have robots that make their pizzas yeah uh yeah yeah so it's uh, possible yeah of course it is 
uh, in my street, I mean, not exactly in my street, but very close, uh, one block away from my uh, home, there's uh, a kebab shop, like, a, um, I don't know if you could know it as kebab or donor or... Uh, yeah, uh, I know. Gyro, but, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the meat is cut by a robot. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty where, cool. Where do you live? I live in the, near the center of Paris. Oh, uh, cool. In the, in the northeast of the, of the city. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it's um, it's not exactly a big restaurant. It's like a small uh, kebab joint, but uh, there's a there's a meat cutting robot, and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. That sounds cool. I want to see that. Sure, but if you is if it you... does it have like is it like a human sort of robot? Did they like make it look cool, or it's just like a knife that spins or something? Oh yeah, no, it's just uh, it's just a knife that. Uh, that they that didn't like with, add uh, googly eyes or anything. Oh to it. no, not at all. It's uh, it's just basically it's uh, it's a metal rectangle with a moving uh, arm uh, with mm -hmm. a knife, with a knife attached to it. It's very very simple thing. It's not yeah. Uh, but it's but it's still cool, yeah. If yeah, you, that's that if you, sounds pretty cool. If you come one day, I'll show it to you, or maybe I, right. can, I can just send you a video. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably simpler. But um, yeah, it, it's it's probably uh, it's probably be uh, it's probably gonna be a big thing. I, I mean, maybe I'm completely wrong, but I, this is a prediction that I make officially that. Uh, consumer uh food robots will be i mean i'm thinking about the ducero uh, that was like this huge scam i don't know if you heard about the yeah, ducero I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. and uh so and it was still kind of successful it was still funded on on uh, a kickstarter i think yeah and uh and so if that can have some success then actually good products will probably be huge yeah, like home cooking robots. Yeah. I can see that for sure. What I heard, I saw another video about the the CEO of Juicero. Uh huh. And he like he has like another project that he's working on. Oh yeah, on now. he's uh, he's uh, selling raw water. Raw? Yes, that that was it. He like turned all hippie and like decided to start another company. Yeah, and apparently it's like really unhealthy because it's like this <laughs> unfiltered water, and so it's, it's got a lot of it has like metals and bacteria inside it. But it's like it's That's like un, it's like untreated water, like uh, it's and, it's uh, good for your immune system, I guess. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, and he's selling that for for a really high price. Raw water. That's crazy. It is. That, that man is crazy. It's like the uh, the the opposite of Alex Jones, you know. He's like he's like the opposite of Elon Musk. He's like counterproductive. <laughs> yeah. What's your opinion on Elon Musk? I, I a lot of people around me love him, and a lot of people around me hate him. And I'm here having a hard time uh, forming an opinion <laughs> on that dude. Why, why do people hate him? Uh, apparently, uh, there's. He's like kind of a uh, 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 Jeff Bezos. Uh, there's uh, issues in his factories, and the workers are not paid well, and the the working oh, conditions are a little dangerous, apparently. And also, yeah. uh, he promised a lot of things, and he didn't deliver. Yeah. Well, from so from from what I know from mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. um, a lot of like a lot of people in my school sort of a plot would apply to work at like Tesla and SpaceX and stuff too. Uh -huh. And what I heard from like friends of friends and stuff is that the interns at SpaceX and Tesla, they were like worked really hard well, and they, yeah, but they had to sense. work like really long hours and just like really overworked. Like they weren't treated well. Isn't that the case for all interns though? In Not every... really. A lot of a lot of interns, a lot of internships are like with big companies. You can sort of just like chill, and it's like it's like oh. good work. Oh. You're productive and stuff, but they don't they don't expect like a lot of things from you. So oh. it's more relaxed. It's something like a healthy work balance, you know. Oh, that's nice. And but from what I know, SpaceX and Tesla, because they're sort of startups and they're still growing a lot, mm -hmm. they overwork everybody. 
but okay. yeah. that, I mean, I, I bet it doesn't compare to the factory workers, you know, that's probably much worse than being in an office anyways. But, um, yeah, I guess that side is probably not very good. Um, it's hard to say if it's like a necessary, um, sort of evil to, to sort of push everyone to work, overwork themselves in order to get to do all the things he's done so far, you know, because yeah. I mean, it's pretty yeah. cool shit that he's done. But I think by my book, I think Elon is I'm like, I don't mind um, his tweeting and all all of him like being reckless and, and like unprofessional. I don't I don't think that's a that's like a problem. I think he's a cool guy. And I mean, as an engineer, like what he's done is pretty cool. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. But he's like, that's he's, no excuse to like mystery your employees. So no, I understand. Sure, that. Sure. Um, I, I, I never know if those are like rumors or real things because, you know, it's yeah. uh, it's like through the grapevine and there's r rarely solid evidence about this stuff. Even for Amazon, it's the case. It's we almost yeah. we are always hear about it, but there are rarely like proof of it. So uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm never really convinced that it's really true. It's believable, but that's not a reason like to condemn someone. There's really yeah. a huge trend recently of condemning people based on rumors and, and hearsay and, and stuff like that. And yeah. uh, I, I really I am a believer uh, on innocent until proven guilty and um for for me the, the burden of proof is always on the accuser and this uh this huge trend recently of like uh tr trying to go against due process and uh you know uh, uh it's on it's on it, you see it on a lot of different stuff but uh yeah people condemning bezos based on rumors about his workers or uh, these these movements like uh if a woman tells you that she's been raped uh, believe her you know uh, so uh maybe you should read uh kill a mockingbird but uh yeah it's um it's scary the 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 the, the, the turn that justice is um like there's so much distrust uh against the judiciary process in in the whole world right now and it's a it's a scary thing because that's i mean that's how the 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 witch hunts started in, in uh yeah in it's, the middle ages yeah it's hard to it's sort of it's sort of hard because society is really chaotic already and and it's more it's not so much of a like a law thing like it's like people aren't condemned legally like legally they're still fine and the law still stands they're yeah. innocent or proven guilty but it's sort of like society shuns them and you can't really control that. It's hard to control society. Like yeah. if a bunch of group, a group of people get together and decide they're going to feel some way about a specific thing. Like it's so hard to change people's minds. It's so hard to sort of change that. You like, it's just like, it's like a weird, if you look at if you think of society as like a living object, like just one person, it's like this weird big glob of like, life and it's just like always morphing and always changing and mm -hmm. it's hard to predict what's gonna happen next you know i mean yeah i guess it's hard to predict but still you can try there are trends or stuff like that but yeah uh, uh, i don't know yeah and of course it's hard to predict so um being an optimist and being a pessimist is uh are both like kind of wrong i prefer being an optimist in yeah, general me too <laughs> uh, but uh, sometimes being a pessimist has uh, has its um, its peaks and its uh, its pros. Cause uh, yeah, definitely. I guess uh, what I am is a short term pessimist and a long term optimist. That's uh, good. I like <laughs> when when I when I got something that's you know gonna happen to me real real uh, real soon. I always assume that it's gonna go bad. Uh, so if it goes bad, I'm prepared, and if it goes good, uh, I am, you know, happily surprised. But yeah. in the long term, I'm a pretty op optimist uh, person because worrying in general is something like that is really counterproductive. Often you worry about things that are out of your control, 
and so you your brain power would probably be better utilized you know uh <laughs> being directed towards things that you can control that you can fix or that you can avoid uh and yeah that's uh, true i think yeah, in general pessimism is kind of counterproductive it's it's not helpful it's not uh it's not uh useful really yeah that's true it's yeah. like it's helpful to to sort of plan for things like to be a little worried about stuff but yeah not all the time it's just like an in modest amount yeah like yeah. everything in moderation yeah yeah i mean in in general it's better not to expect uh things i guess whether they are positive or negative it's it's better yeah. to uh not think too much about what could happen because you're you, in life i don't know if it's just me because i'm bad at you know predicting few, uh, what was is going to happen but i am so often surprised by by events by by people by uh you know things that um I, I stopped completely expecting things and you know like some people who like make these whole movies in in their heads and think uh, that things are gonna go like this and that people are gonna think that and uh, um, I'm so often completely wrong and I'm so often com completely taken aback by, by events that are, are completely surprising me that uh, that's true I, I stopped uh, I stopped completely uh worrying and and thinking about what's gonna happen and i'm i i would rather go with the flow and take things as they come because i mean that's what i'm good at uh in, yeah. in the end so uh, yeah i think that uh there's um there are there are two philosophies in life in in life when it comes to uh better yourself there are two two basically schools of of thought it's uh, people who like work on their flaws to try to reduce them, or or people who work on their on strengths to try to maximize them. Mm. And I think that the the latter is more productive than the former. It's oh, just, that's that's it's interesting. Just, I've never heard that before. I mean, it's just my <clears throat> opinion, I guess. But um, yeah. Every every person has as you know flaws and qualities and every mm -hmm. things has, has pros and cons and uh, I think working on your strength to try to make them like as strong as possible is usually more uh, more productive thing and uh, usually yields better results than trying to uh, minimize the cons and uh, and reduce the flaws of a of a thing. I mean, you can That's... do both. You can do both, of course. But uh... yeah, I I think I'd say I'm more of like a like a balance between the both both of them because i do i do think i believe that you can not minimize flaws but sort of like acknowledge them and yeah and try to like i guess minimize is an like a good word to describe it um but i think it's possible like people can can change and people can like not not be the same that they were Say in like over a year, they can people can change, and if you have certain flaws, you can work on them too, and that's always good too. It's probably just as good to me to work on your flaws than on your strengths. Yeah, man. Often you don't really have the time and energy to do both. Uh, yeah, to, to do both really well. Uh, but uh, and so so that's why most people try to concentrate on one aspect. Yeah, um, it's true. So, it's hard to do everything, but. Yeah. you do a little by little i guess though that's 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 interesting uh that's one thing that i that i really think about often uh is that what you just say that people can change and uh it's uh, i think about this about this really often and i'm mm -hmm. never uh, i i tend to think that people don't really change and that um Maybe we like we become more of what we already are, uh, but uh, ha, ha, it's um, it's like big. It's like a big question that I think about really often. Is that do people mm. really change? Like like do, sometimes they seem to change, but do they really change? 
Oh, I, I'm that's not so sure about that. <laughs> Maybe. Well, if say say you're not being yourself. Yeah. But then at, in that moment, that's who you are. You're if if you're not being your true true self, mm. you're still somebody different. So even like five years later you you're gonna be if you're even closer to your true self and say your true self doesn't have that flaw then you've changed like in the in the present moment maybe your the essence of your of who you're supposed to be is something you're supposed to reach later in life and it's or like i also th i've also thought that like when you're when the second you're born you're like your purest self and mm -hmm. then shit the shit that happens to you as you grow up that like puts you further away from your true self and your the goal in life or like one of the goals in life is to to get back to the to the true um to your true self to like who you are and sort of undo any damage or like anything that's gotten you far away from who you were when you were once like a like a newborn baby yeah i mean it's the the eternal nature versus nurture argument yeah uh, but but yeah what you, what you're saying makes a lot of sense and um if you're i mean if you're doing something it's real and even and when if you're saying something even if you don't mean it it's still real i mean it's um it's like in the it's like in the Matrix, you know, uh, where when they're uh, you've seen the Matrix, of course, mm -hmm. and when they're uh, connected uh, to the Matrix, uh, what happens to them still happens to them, even if it's just in their mind. Uh, what's what's real? If uh, what's it's what Morpheus says uh, near the beginning of the movie. Uh, if uh, for you, real is what you can see. Uh, hear or touch, then reality is just uh, an electric signal interpreted by your brain. And yeah. uh, so when you imagine a thing, then it's real because it was in your it was in your head. It's not physical, but it's still reality because you can mm -hmm. think about it. And the, the 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 simple fact that you can think about it makes it a thing. If you can write a book about it. Then it's it's real. It's not physical, but it's it's real. And so when you are like in, in society or like with your even if it's with your friends or family or a, a lover or whatever, and you do a thing or say something, but you don't really mean it, and you only do or say that thing because of perceived expectations that people have of you. Uh, then it's still your personality because you did it even if you didn't feel like it that's you still, true you still thought that people <clears throat> would accept you better or like leave you alone if you did or say that thing so it's still part of your personality i guess that's uh by the logic that you're saying that's uh that the same uh that where it goes and i i never really thought about it like that uh, but uh, it's a really good point that you're making. Yeah, that's that's sort of how humans are limited. We're like we can only we can only like see, hear, and touch and taste and stuff, and we have like the senses, and then we have like an us sort of an extra thing, which is our mind and like our imagination, where we can also sort of see things in our in like our brain mm -hmm. and like our imagination mm -hmm. um but i i bet there's like we don't know we don't know if there's other things out in the world to perceive and we don't know if this is reality like um so i'm i'm not 100 percent sure if this is scientifically correct but say that you look at a tree the mm -hmm. the color you see is green but the tree is actually reflecting the color green from the sun that hits it to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the but for it to be able to reflect the color green, it has to be the opposite color. So it's like some sort of purple. Mm -hmm. So trees are actually purple, which is like insane. And, but we see green, so we think trees are green. Yeah. 
it's uh yeah and uh yeah yeah it, it absorbs uh purple so it's uh and it's like the there is no way of telling if your green is the same as my green because we're looking at the tree and we see green but is is the color that we see like in our eyes and in our brain the same there is absolutely no way of telling because yeah. we, we see that thing and we name it green but uh, do we actually see the same thing and uh, no, nobody nobody knows there is absolutely no way of of knowing that and uh it's kind of it's kind of funny and it's kind of scary and it's it uh, drives it's, you crazy if you yeah. really think about it yeah, yeah just yeah. start doubting everything yeah it's uh it's weird how uh, our brains can be uh can be so the same and so different also from person to person yeah uh, like uh oh there's a thing that i learned recently like can uh can you like close your eyes and think about uh the sea like you're uh, you're at the beach there's uh, yeah. there's like uh the the waves you can smell the the salt there's some sun there's uh, some uh some gulls that are flying you can picture that in your in your mind right yeah well a lot of people can't like at all and it's like oh uh, yeah it's like almost 10 percent of people who have absolutely they 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 absolutely can't uh have a ma make an image in in their minds like a lot of us yeah. can that's like, crazy they, they can like they know what a bitch is they they've been to one so they can think about the concept of a bitch, but they don't see or feel anything in their minds. And it's um, and from person to person, it varies also. Some people can see things, but they cannot hear things. Like uh, when you think about a song, you can hear it in your in your mind, but a lot of people can't. And uh, that's such a weird thing to think about. And uh, so uh, for them, uh, we must be the weird ones. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, so um so maybe there are people who have uh who can do things in, inside them that we we cannot even imagine because uh it's uh i mean it's 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 weird maybe there are yeah. some guys if there are when i heard about this uh this shrimp that can see more colors than us and it, it always it always weirds me out some stuff like that mm -hmm. So so many so many birds can see the magnetic field of the Earth, and that's how they can uh, see, find their paths when they. So they uh, they, they see it or they feel yep. it. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think they see it. Like, that's crazy. Uh, but I, but maybe they feel it. Um, rats can see. Uh, I mean, I, I say rats because. Uh, I know a lot about rats, uh, but uh, it's not just rats. Do you have it's, a pet rat? I have five. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> actually, I have four. There's one that, that died recently. Um, oh, I'm sorry, man. Oh, uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's fine. It what was, was quite, his was or quite, hers name? Uh, Pancake. Oh, that's such a nice name for a rat. He <laughs> was uh, he was quite old, so it's uh, it's kind of okay. But yeah, I I've been having pet rats for uh, many years now so i i lear learned a lot about them but it's yeah. not just rats it's a lot of animals that can do that uh, it's uh, sea um ultraviolets oh wow it's such a weird thing to think about that their uh their their, their spectrum of vision is like higher than us they they cannot yeah. see they cannot see red or uh, or orange uh, and uh they can faintly see uh, yellow but then they can see uh, green, blue, purple, and ultraviolet. And uh, when you can see ultraviolet, you can see a whole lot of different things. Uh, that's why so many uh, animals uh, piss to mark their, their territory. Because uh -huh. uh, piss is like really... It's uh, when, uh, when you, you uh, use an ultraviolet light, you can really see it like it really stands out. And... Um, and, uh, oh, and they have a gland uh, that uh, that uses to uh, to uh, for scent markers, but also uh, they can. Uh, it's like you know, uh, I, uh, this little fairy tale of um, little kids who uh, 
put um, rocks uh, on the on the floor to find their way. Well, rats do this. Uh, they uh, they pee like little droplets of piss, uh, really? and, and and it lights up uh, as, a, as a as a path, so they can see where they where where they have been. Um, so are your rats just pissing all over your house? Yeah, fortunately, <laughs> rat piss in little is, drops. Yeah, 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 all the time. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, and uh, fortunately, uh, red piece is uh, basically odorless. But, oh, that's uh, good. Uh, well, it it kind of has to because uh, um, because they're, they they could be praise otherwise uh, oh, when your when your uh, when your pee is um, is lots of um, is a really smelly uh, predator yeah. can can find you easily. That's imagine, why. Imagine if humans. Just peed everywhere to might leave a trail. Yep, that would be weird. That would be uh, hilarious. <laughs> that's why. Um, I, I do that when I go hiking. <laughs> yeah, same. Of course. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why cat pee uh, smells so strongly. But uh, other pets uh, doesn't because cats are predators, so they don't give a shit basically. Oh, uh, it's all natural selection then. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, sometimes I've wondered why, like, my dog will just like trip out for a second and like look blankly into the space or like start listen hearing for things that I'm not hearing at all, and it's like uh, they must be hearing something that's that I can't hear, and oh, it's yeah. like it's, they must be seeing some sh crazy shit that I'm just not seeing either, you know? Yeah, dogs have crazy good hearing. Yeah. Uh, and don't, they don't have that good vision. No, their vision is uh, is not that good. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, they have good night vision, though. Yeah, they do. Uh, compared to us. But uh, but their vision is not crazy good. Uh, it's kind of blurry. And we and we rely a lot on our vision, so it ends yeah. up like it ends up taking over a lot of our senses, and we're limited only because we're we we can see so we we just depend on our vision a lot like blind people have much heightened senses for like taste and hearing and stuff oh yeah 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 and that's they, pretty uh, cool how we can adapt like that too yep and they they also have uh um less uh dietary needs slightly uh Bl blind people uh yeah because the the part of our your brain uh, that processes vision consumes like a lot of oxygen and and sugar on a daily basis. I mean, I, I say sugar, but I mean uh, nutrients like carbohydrates. And, yeah, yeah, and um, I mean it's not in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much compared to your muscles, but it's still it's still quite a lot. Uh, oh wow! I, I remember I learned that when um, uh, uh, some uh, time ago I was practicing apnea. Uh huh. And uh, when you close your eyes, you can stay underwater uh, for quite a longer time than when you have your eyes open. That's oh, yeah. because, because your uh, your brain consumes that much oxygen when processing vision signals. Wow, that's it's, so uh, cool. It's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's crazy, I, I, but there's this YouTuber that you probably know him. He he like tries a bunch of things. He like tries to learn a lot of things. Oh yeah, that uh, the British dude. Yeah, and he 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 did that. He did the one where he tried to like stay underwater for five minutes or something like that. And yeah. he he sort of figured out that closing his eyes, he could hold his breath longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, That's uh, pretty cool. I I didn't know that your vision sort of used up a lot of oxygen and stuff. Yeah, I mean. Uh... Your your brain uses like a lot of the energy of your of your body. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's of course it depends on how physically active you are. Uh, if you're more physically active, then your muscles will uh, will of course uh, use a lot more energy. But but your brain uses a, a significant amount of energy, uh, given that it's basically just a small organ. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's in your head. Uh, because all of uh, these, um, all of the thoughts, 
uh, and also the control that you have on your body, whether whether it's things that you control, like your your arms and legs, or things that you don't control, like uh, the beating of your heart, uh, mm-hmm. is um, is all electric. Uh, it's it's all electrical impulses, and so to make that electricity, uh, the, the 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 neurons uh, have to spend uh, quite a lot of energy and quite a lot of oxygen. And, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah. So in a sense, robots are just like humans. We they have electricity and sensors and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're like robots. It's hard to tell <coughs> how much robots are like us because there is still a lot about you, the human brain that we don't know. Yeah, uh, we know exactly how a robot works and and what's going on I- in in there. But we don't know exactly how a human brain works. So, yeah. uh, so because of that, it's hard to tell if robots are re- uh, if we are really like robots or not. Because there's still a ton of things about the human brain that we still don't uh, understand, and we we'll still don't know what's going on in a in a lot of areas. Yeah, and, um, I think I think that's when you think about it, it's kind of crazy because we've uh, we have. Uh, a robot in 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 space that has escaped the solar system <laughs> recently like it is yeah. it is at an unfathomable distance from earth and it mm-hmm. has been taking pictures of like jupiter and shit and we 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 have analyzed rocks for, from mars and and stuff and uh, we we know what's going on at the bottom of oceans uh, which is crazy deep with a crazy high pressure and and stuff like that and uh, and yet uh, we don't really know how the human brain works. We have a general global understanding of it, but there's still so much about it that we don't know. And yeah, it's, uh, that's it's true. Weird. And we haven't we haven't even discovered most of the ocean either. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, we're so, already like yeah. crazy far away in outer space and stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's uh it's a pressure thing. It's yeah. what um it's it's why uh we we have a hard time digging the the earth uh, uh after a certain distance. There are mm-hmm. uh, people in Russia that started to uh to do a really uh deep um uh hole, uh, uh like a well, like a really deep well. Uh but uh, they uh, they had to stop after a while uh because it was too the the pressure was too too high and the temperature also and so there was no uh, metal or no material strong enough to, to uh, withstand that and they uh, they could not they could not even go like uh, at ten percent of the Earth's crust. Oh wow! Uh, and it's um, and it's uh, it's the same for the oceans. Uh, People. Uh, places like the Mariana Trench, uh, which is at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, mm-hmm. is uh, the pressure is so high that there is no um, piece of equipment that uh, is strong enough to to go there. Everything that we try to send there goes gets wrecked uh, by the the pressure, the, the sheer yeah. pressure of the the, the water, and. Uh, it's it's crazy to think that there are some uh, some living organisms there. There there is uh, some evidence that there are living things at the at the bottom, but yet there is no metal strong enough to uh, to go there. It's the one of the reasons that uh, we don't know what's inside Jupiter, despite the fact that it's just a big ball of gas. I mean, we mm-hmm. think it's a big ball of gas. We have no idea what's at the center. We can guess based on various stuff but uh, we everything that we try to send uh gets absolutely destroyed by the gas pressure of of jupiter which is like a huge ball of 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 gas that is permanently collapsing on itself because of the the gravity of the 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 gas and uh, that builds such an incredible pressure that uh everything gets uh gets destroyed that's yes that's also pretty fucking weird to think about. It's crazy how there's like so many, so much cool shit in the world. 
and like all around us and there's so many things to do and like out of everything we've decided to do we like make memes <laughs> <laughs> out of all the things we could be doing one of the things that's most popular on earth right now is memes. I mean, laughter is uh, a really important thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's what really uh, separates us from the beasts, I guess. Yeah. And it's, why it's one of the things that, what it means, what it means to be human, because we are, we're animals basically uh, on every account, but uh, having fun, telling jokes, that is something that is really, really human. And uh, a, few oh. of re a few of really intelligent animals have some kind of a sense of humor. Really? But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but oh, I guess m monkeys do laugh and, like, joke around. Yeah. Uh, I've seen rats uh, playing pranks on each other. That's funny. You know the thing that uh, some people do when uh, they uh, hit someone uh, with the other arm and then they pretend uh, uh -huh. they did nothing? Yeah. Like, I've, I've seen rats doing that to each other. What? That's crazy. And of course, there's no reason to do that. So it was obvious that they, <laughs> they were doing it for fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, elephants also have a, have a, a kind of sense of fun. Ele elephants, uh, horses too, I think. Dogs. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can you can count the uh, the animals that uh, that do things for fun on the probably on on one hand. Yeah, and, uh, I've I was thinking that I've never seen like an animal laugh except like a monkey, mm -hmm. but it's probably because they laugh in some way that's like laughing is to them, but not it's not the same as to us, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they probably do emit some sort of sound or do something that's them laughing mm -hmm. but it's we just don't perceive it the same way yep uh well there was an experiment on on rats recently uh showing that uh when they have fun or, or when you tickle them uh they do laugh but it's a frequency that is uh too high to be heard for from uh, the human ear mm -hmm. but uh, it, it was recorded by specific uh, by spe special equipment that uh, hears like ultrasounds yeah so uh so so yeah but um like telling jokes is a whole a whole other level it's uh we have a a, a mode of communication that is so much advanced than uh, any other animal that um you know and we also have um a sense of abstraction that mm -hmm. is also something really different we can uh, we can think about things that are not really in the moment and we can recall memories and remember when uh they um they occur that is uh the sense of time basically yeah and we're basically the only animal that has that for example uh i remember a thing that also was uh, an experiment that also was done on rats uh because i because i know a lot about rats and because a lot of experiments are done <laughs> on rats so uh, so it's it, it, and um yeah, uh, there was an experiment that was done on rats to see how their memory works. Because, like, when they learn a path, like in a maze or stuff like that, they can remember it. And so um, there was experiments to see how it works and uh, what um, what's really going on in their brains. And so the experiments showed that uh, they can recall things, but they have no idea... Uh, of when it it happened that they have oh, absolutely they have absolutely <clears throat> zero sense of time and so when they remember a thing they cannot tell if it was like yesterday or one year ago it's absolutely it's just insane. like a like a vision they're like just yep. remember it yeah exactly and so um, and apparently uh, memory works like that in in most animals that that have uh -huh. a, a memory so mammals and uh birds some some birds and uh um like uh octopi oct yeah octop octopuses octopodes i don't i never remember <laughs> no octopi is wrong uh because uh it's not from a, a latin word so the plural should not be i uh it's octo octopodes i think or octopuses 
Uh, but <laughs> you see, the, the things with the eight uh, tentacles. And, yes, uh, I know. Uh, which are actually apparently six tentacles and two legs. It's they don't oh. have eight tentacles. It's a uh, it's a misconception. Uh, I didn't but, know uh, that. Or maybe that's the difference between octopuses and squids. I never. I. I. I I'm not. Uh, I'm not enough versed in marine biology to uh, to tell ya, but uh, George Costanza probably could, but I can't. A lot of animals must live, really live in the present all the time, because since yeah. they don't have like a perception of time, and memories just come to them like in the moment, mm -hmm. they're always just living in the present. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's. Uh... Oh, that's uh, well, that I would think be nice. I think it's a quote from the Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask. Uh, let's say uh, the what uh, what separates us really from the animals is that uh, they they live in the present, and uh, we have the, this fear of time running out. Yeah, I think we have like a curse. Yeah, it's uh, it it's really a, is a curse sometimes. Yeah, it really is a. I mean, yeah, yeah, it really is a curse. It's a it's a blessing and a curse, but it's mostly a curse. It's probably like a, a blessing by our own definition, but in reality, it might just be a curse. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, like, we're we, like, oh, we have phones now, and phones are good, but, like, do we really need phones? I mean, that's always uh, a debate. That what do we really need and what's yeah. really the difference between life and survival uh, yeah because we don't need art no uh, we don't need there's so many things that are important to us and that we don't need to survive but do we need them to live you know that's yeah. uh, what really life is is um is is up to debate uh things uh nietzsche friedrich nietzsche uh said that uh you cannot live without music you cannot survive but uh you, you cannot really have a life if you don't listen to music uh and uh a lot of uh, a lot of people are, are kind of wondering what is what do really what do we really need and what is need in uh in terms of life because for survival it's really simple oxygen mm -hmm. water food maybe shelter you know and that's it uh but for life what do we really need and is, is need really a metric that is quantifiable uh, for uh human existence it's uh it's a weird question yeah it's hard to tell because it's always changing yeah, yeah, it's always changing, and uh, definition of sort of like happiness and your standard of living, yeah. or like ways to measure happiness are like always changing. There's always different measures for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's also quite kind of a vague notion, happiness. I mean, what is it really? What is really happiness? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, especially since I've had depression for like 20 years, so it's not something that has happened often to me, but uh, still, I, I think that most people would have really a hard time defining it, even if some... Uh, I think it's in the, the US Constitution that uh, it says that every man has a right for uh, the pursuit the happiness, of happiness. The pursuit of happiness, yeah. So uh, it's even it's like a, a legal term uh, that is like in the, in the in the constitutions of some countries in the U.S. at least it is and uh, yeah. But you would ask ask I, I, in my opinion ask a hundred people to define happiness and you will get a hundred definitions. That's that true. Maybe contradict each other. Yeah. So it's. Uh, uh, it's kind of uh, at the center uh, of uh, of the the whole thing. Uh, I remember I was interviewed uh, a, a couple um, years ago 
mm-hmm. by uh, uh, some um, some magazine or whatever that was doing a, th- uh, a paper on uh, on memes and meme pages. And uh, since I was a uh, still am one of the biggest meme pages on Facebook, I got to be interviewed by these guys. Uh huh. And uh, so uh, they they asked me a, a question that. Um, that was really interesting because, uh, well, I, I was not the only one to be interviewed. Of course, they asked a lot of meme curators and creators, uh, all the biggest of uh, the time, to uh, to answer these questions. And um, what one one question? Yeah, one question was uh, about like a depression, because there is and there is more and more an intertwined. Um, history of, of memes and, and depression. There are so many memes about uh, having poor mental health and using memes to cope and memes about bad mental health. And uh, I remember these guys asked me, do you think that uh, liking memes and looking at memes all the time can be a contributing factor to having a bad mental health or is looking at memes uh, and making memes a way of coping, or are these just uh, correlation and not causation? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so I, I answered uh, that in my opinion, memes are a way to cope, uh, but uh, other people gave uh, really different answers. Some people think that uh, liking memes and looking at memes all the time makes you depressed. I've seen a lot of people say that, and even not just like old people who know nothing about memes, like uh, real uh, meme creators and uh, and, uh, and curators and people who who are in the meme uh, culture for for years uh, think that. And um, oh wow, it's uh, it's an interesting question. Yeah, and, uh, and I I think it's a really interesting question for us because it's kind of a. a at the center of, of what we do. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, even if it's just a hobby, uh, uh, it's still a really interesting thing to uh, to think about because there are, it's it's blatant that there are a lot of memes that revolved around mental health and, and mental uh, illness. And uh, so is, is it something about memes that attracts mentally ill people? Or is it something about memes that make people more mentally ill? Or is it something about memes that make people realize that they are mentally ill, uh, even if they, they didn't realize before? But uh, mm-hmm. or is it or is it just a, a coincidence? Like it, it might, happens sometimes. It could just be a trend too. It was definitely yeah. more of a trend like a couple years ago. True. I haven't yeah. seen that many like suicidal memes recently it's coming back it's yeah. uh it's coming back um, but it's definitely always been a thing i think yeah. hu- humor itself is a is a coping mechanism that's like i believe that for sure um so it's but it's hard to tell if memes are the causation of mental health issues it might be for some people I'd say it, I think that's the answer. It just really varies. To some people, it might be harmless. To other people, it might not. It might be a little bit of both, and it might be something that helps others too. You know, everyone's just so different. Yeah, exactly. I think that's pertinent, and uh, it reminds you know what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the the Pagliacci joke. You know the Pagliacci joke. I just is that. From what movie is that? Because I recently watched that or a uh, show or something. I don't think it's from a movie. It's a quite. It's an old. Uh, it's an old joke. Uh, oh, I just watched um, Watchmen. Is that the 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 clown? Yeah. Yes. The, they yeah. they make they have that in in the movie Watchmen. Yeah, and it's uh, you know uh, for people who are listening and don't know the joke, I'm gonna tell it real quick. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Tell um, it. Tell it. It's a guy uh, that goes to the, the psychiatrist or some kind of shrink and he's saying uh, you know uh, doctor I've been like really depressed recently I have, I'm having dark thoughts and um, I'm really not in a good place I, I'm, I'm sad I'm, uh, 
I'm distressed and uh, I really don't feel good. Um, I, I need help, I think. And uh, the doctor says, uh, you know what? We're going to help you, but uh, uh, there's something that will, it, it can be really great for you. It's uh, right now there's uh, the circus is in town and there is this great clown called Pagliacci and he makes everyone <clears throat> laugh and he makes everyone feel good and go 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 to the circus go see him it, I'm sure it will cheer you up and uh, and the dude is like but doctor I am Pagliacci <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah. So uh, it's not uh, it's not a new thing, and it's not just internet memes. Uh, that joke is uh, from before the internet. Yeah, that's true. So that movie, I I just saw. It's crazy that you brought that up because I just saw Watchmen, like because it was on Netflix. I just saw that movie like two days ago, and uh, they had that joke in it. Yeah, it's funny. It's uh, have you have you seen Watchmen? Uh, no, I've read it, but I haven't seen the movie. Oh, it's so good, right? I haven't yeah, read the, the, the comics, but the it's, comic, it's the comics is uh, is amazing. Yeah, I really liked all the sort of themes, and it was more than just an action movie. It was like oh yeah, so many questions about humanity and all this. It was like really good movie too. Yep, it's one of these movies that asks more questions than it answers, and uh, I like that. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah. My favorite character was um, Roar Shark. Oh, okay. I'm not I sure. Him. I'm not sure which one is um, the um, the guy with the the mask. No, no, I no, no, I, I know who Roar Shark oh, is. Oh, oh, oh. I was just saying I'm not sure which one of my favorite characters. Oh, uh, which is. one's yours? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But I uh, liked him because he just seemed like a like a pure soul, like you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really innocent, and yet. Yeah. Uh, not uh, so uh, not naive. It's uh, yeah. it's uh, it's a good uh, it's a good character. He was definitely the one that I laughed the most at mm. the jokes he made and or like the things he did. I I wasn't really he wasn't like a funny character, but the things he did were funny to like an outsider's point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like the autistic guy in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> And it's it's not everyone. I I've seen a lot of people who enjoy memes who have perfectly good mental health. I know mm -hmm. mine. I know mine isn't good. How is yours? I'd I'd say mine is all right. I was I definitely went through some tough times a couple of years ago, like when I was starting college. But mm -hmm. I've I I've, I've been in like therapy and stuff, so I like still do therapy because I've I like to just have someone to talk to, you know. Yeah. And I feel like it helps a lot. Uh, but like recently it's been much better. I just if I've been through some rough patches though in my life. But I, I don't think I don't think for me it's like it's like an like a like a chronic thing, like all my life I'm gonna have to deal mm -hmm. with yeah. with sort of depression or something like that. It's something that sort of came and went. Um but I know for a lot of people, it's just something that's always there, and you just have to sort of cope with it and deal with it in different ways. Yep. Yeah. Well, if it was at the beginning of college, uh, it was probably just sleep deprivation. Uh, mm -hmm. Being being sleep deprived can can make you really uh, not in a good place. Uh, yeah. And uh, it it can really fuck up your brain. And um, that's also yeah. Also. Sort of going away from my family and having to, oh yeah, yeah, to like live on my own for the first time. It was tough, you know. Uh, yeah, but, adapt, adapting to new circumstances is always yeah. distressing. Yeah, but um, it, it, I turned out, I turned out fine. I hope so. I wanted, I was curious about um, yeah. memes on Facebook because you mentioned you had like a Facebook meme page. Mm-hmm. So like, what's going on over there? Like, what what would you say about Facebook memes com when comparing to like Instagram memes and stuff? Um, there is not really a difference in the content. The difference between platforms is essentially in the way that you interact uh, with people. 
Uh, mm -hmm. on, on Facebook, there is a really high level of interaction with your audience. Uh, out of all the platforms I'm on, it's clearly Facebook. You have much more interaction than anywhere else. Uh, wow. And um, that's what makes it special. The memes themselves are not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all the time on Reddit, Twitter, uh, not Twitter, uh, not not so much, but Reddit, Tumblr, uh, 4chan, Instagram, Facebook, and mm -hmm. um, the 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 memes themselves are not so different from one platform to another. If mm -hmm. something is if some some something is popular somewhere, it's pretty sure that it's gonna spread to uh, to everywhere else. Yeah, uh, but uh, the way. Uh, people interact uh, with each other and the way memes are posted. That's what makes platforms really different um, from from, uh, from one another. Uh, mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know, from, for example, on Reddit, there's a whole subreddit thing where uh, there is like one subreddit per subject and some are kind of broad, like the R videos, for example, and some are kind of like really specific like uh, there's one subreddit I'm I'm on. I was uh, browsing yesterday, where it's just about memes of Peter Griffin giving lengthy explanations <laughs> at the end of the meme. Really? Yeah. That's and there funny. are there are some really really specific ones. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there are some really broad ones, but the specific ones are usually better. Uh, and I, I think you could you could make like some kind of curve because the, the the really broad ones are are not so good the yeah. the, the quite specific ones are, are are good and then when it's too specific uh, it's uh, usually pretty pretty desert and there's not a lot of uh, not enough content to really uh, uh, start a, a, a flow in a community that is uh, that is uh, living you know it's it's kind of dead uh, when it's too specific obviously yeah if it's too specific they don't like let any new things in either yeah and then it doesn't and, uh, really adapt or grow in, in any way yeah exactly and so uh it can um uh, so sometimes people are like reaching out to create content uh and uh just to fit the the rules of the sub and uh, and so this this content uh, is usually not really good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, especially if it's something that has no outside activity, like mm -hmm. uh, of course if it's a subreddit uh, to uh, for for some YouTuber, uh, every time he makes a new video, there's new activity and there's new stuff. But if it's like uh, for a specific memes that is that is dead, that people try to uh, artificially. Uh, make stay alive. Uh, it's it, it it can be quite uh, quite uh, quite bad. Yeah, that's uh, true. And Red and Reddit and 4chan are like they're not as user focused. They're more like purely the content. Yeah, especially so it's 4chan. it's hard to like grow your own page or do anything like that on there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're kind uh, of anonymous. It's just like a username, but that's no one cares who made it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, if there are some exceptions, like there mm -hmm. are some some people who get kind of famous on Reddit. Yeah, that's uh, true. There is w especially what I'm thinking about called shitty watercolor, who makes yes, shitty watercolor him. paintings. Yeah, and uh, he's kind of like the, he's kind of like Lush sucks, but uh, he makes water paintings instead of graffiti. Yeah, uh, and um, but yeah, there are, there. Are, most people are are anonymous, and even if they have a a username, it's uh, most people. I, I know a lot of people on Reddit who don't even look at the usernames at all. Yeah, that's true. And they get mad too if you post if you like post something with a watermark. They don't <laughs> yeah. get mad, but they'll just like point it out and make fun of it. Yeah, I mean, it goes against Reddit rules. Yeah, uh, a lot of the time. Uh, so um, that's that may be also why, but um, yeah, it's um, it's it's different. You can create a community, but it's rarely uh, around someone. I mean, uh, there are exceptions, like the PewDiePie subreddit, of course, is yeah. quite active, and it's but uh, he himself is not really active in the sub. Uh, there's the Jontron subreddit that is quite active too, 
but mm-hmm. he he is I've never seen him in there. Well, he uh, he does sort of use the memes on there for the meme review sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. So he interacts with it, but not through Reddit itself. It's yeah, like exactly yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and so of course it's like I'm strictly sorry. for the people. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's not even really for the people. I think it's for the content. Mm. Uh, the content is uh, is central, like you said earlier, and the people are not. Uh, yeah, and uh, that is that is good. That is a good thing, uh, in uh, in in many respects, um, because it's um, you know it's always better to have less ego when you're trying to uh, to share stuff and um, but of course for people who want to make a career out of it uh, then it's a dead end. Some people, yeah. some people like like Shitty Watercolor uh, manage to to do that. But it's it's really rare, especially since you cannot you cannot monetize on on Reddit. Yeah, I've heard of this other girl. She does like a lot of baking stuff, and she got really famous through Reddit. Oh yeah, and she got like a like a Netflix baking show thing. Oh, um, um, Rosanna Pancino? No, 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 not her. Uh... It's just, she does like. She does like gothic stuff and like creatures and stuff like that. Oh yeah, the the, the gothic cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, she yeah, was yeah. she was huge, and every time she posted, like the post would go on the homepage and like blow up and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but it was so, also because the content was good, you know. If she was just posting shitty stuff, of course. But um, yeah, I, I, I've seen some creators uh, who uh, who um, use Reddit to, uh, to to blow up, but it's it's usually people who are like crafty, like mm-hmm. um, like the the guy who does watercolors, the girl who does cakes, you know. Yeah. It's not um, uh, nobody can get gr- big on on Reddit with with memes. Uh, I, yeah. I don't think it, I don't think it can happen. Yeah, that's true. I've but, been looking uh, to get into Facebook. Like I've always sort of wanted to, uh-huh. but I, I just get so lazy to post. Cause when I post, I just want to like post it and, and just stop thinking about it. But if yeah. I have to like go onto my Instagram and then post it and then copy the caption and then put it on Facebook too. And it's like, I just want one place. That's just like easy to go to, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. I understand. Uh, well, I you probably could use if this then that uh, to automate the um, the process. Yeah, you know, you know uh, if this then that. No, uh, I I don't know what that is. It's a website that can automate uh, some of your uh, processes on the internet uh, oh. and uh, re- repost some stuff. I re- I remember I used it a few years ago, so I don't re- I don't uh, remember exactly how it works. Yeah. But, um, you know, it can uh, if you post a, a thing somewhere, then it can repost it somewhere else. Or uh, and it's is it free? I I th- I think it is. I it it was uh, a few years ago. Uh, it, it I think it still is free. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna check it out. Um. Yeah. The um, the website is uh, if uh, it's it it's uh, IFTTT. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's it looks good. Yeah. And, um, I'm gonna check it out for sure. It'd be it'd be nice because Instagram does have a like sharing through Facebook thing, but it just posts the link to the Instagram post. It oh yeah, that is garbage. Yeah, someone told me to do that once, and I was like, "Dude, this is so bad. Why would you suggest this, Jesus?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it, Twitter, Twitter is the same thing. I want to post on Twitter, yep. but it just posts the link. Yeah, it only works on with uh, with Tumblr. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's also difficult to get big on Tumblr with memes. Yeah, so I've seen people try, but uh... the worst thing about Instagram is getting sort of shadow banned and getting your posts removed and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, it's uh, well, Facebook is even worse for that. Really? Uh, yeah. Of out of all the networks, Facebook is absolutely the worst. Uh, yeah, I guess they had to crack shit. down. After the election and all the all the shit about privacy and stuff that 
Oh no, it's it's actually better now. Uh, it was worse a few years ago. Oh really? Yeah, uh, the the worst time was like 2015, uh, where yeah. it was. Uh, I uh, I remember some people got banned for for posting pictures with the Snapchat dog filter. I don't know why, but it was. Uh, what? Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but it was a banable offense. I I, I never understood why, but uh, it, it happened a lot. Or for people for posting, uh, there's a. Uh, also a picture that is now uh, famous on Facebook. It's um, it's a picture of a goose, and uh, it's uh, there's a bonfire behind the goose, and so the the angle of the picture is taken so it looks like the head of the goose is is on fire, and mm-hmm. so uh, that also uh, got a lot of people banned. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um. You can get uh, banned on Facebook so easily. I remember uh, a meme that I shared a long time ago. Uh, it was a, the, a painting of a slave ship, and the caption was "How to pick up black girls." Oh, and uh, I, I got banned so hard because of this. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you think it's because more people get triggered on Facebook because it's a different audience? There's like more moms and shit. I don't. And Instagram is know. more like fourteen-year-old kids. I don't. I don't know. Maybe, uh, but it's. Um, I think the the moderation really works differently, because yeah. um, you, you can get banned even if uh, a really small amount of people complain, and uh, some some even some stuff is automatically uh, removed by like robots. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of people on Facebook. There's not a lot of moderators. And um, it's estimated that a moderator usually has uh, less than 10 seconds to make the call when he reviews complaints. So, uh, oh, geez. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, I've had a lot of, I've had a couple things get taken down on my Instagram. And it's really frustrating because half of them aren't even like, meant to be offensive but people uh-huh. get offended and people just get them taken down yep yeah yeah and it's yeah. usually like not your followers it's the explore page and stuff yeah 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 uh it's uh yeah it's uh it's worse on facebook you really have to tread lightly and uh be really careful uh, of what you post it's the yeah. most uh it's the most censored platform uh, of them all okay i'll keep that in mind then so, so yeah, you really no no um, no nudity, nothing that talks about sex, uh, no not nothing that can be construed as racist or homophobic, mm-hmm. and um, no you know a lot of things are uh, are insta ban. Uh, I mean, recently they put in place an appeal process, so that 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 is a For huge Im- yeah that is a huge improvement. It's it started really recently. Uh, before, when you got uh, when you got banned or uh, when you, th- there's, there was this thing removed, there was nothing you could do about it. Yeah, um, but uh, they, oh, they started good. putting in place an, uh, an appeal process or whatever, and uh, so that's that's better. And also, they are they are a little you know less um, less trigger happy recently. Uh, mm-hmm. Although they there has been a, um, a big crackdown on fake accounts and spammers. And uh, a lot of stuff gets uh, false flagged, also uh, that's uh, that's not good. I, I had yeah. I had a thing removed recently, which was absolutely not not spam, but um, I still was post blocked for a for a week. Um, and when you when you get something removed, does your engagement go down too? Do you notice it? Um, not really. I mean, for for me at least, it it's it's not really the case. No. The the issue is that when you get something removed, then you're blocked from posting for um uh, it can go from a couple of days to a month. Oh, the in on Facebook you can't even post at all? Yeah, you cannot even answer comments or, or whatever. Oh or, shit. Or even even sometimes liking things is, is blocked. Oh no, that's so um so that can result in a in a serious drop in engagement and um Yeah. And reach. Yeah. Instagram, 
is a little different when you get <clears throat> if you get a post taken down it it's usually like it, it the length of when how long your engagement drops is is hard to tell but it's usually like two three weeks and you can still post and stuff but your stuff will just like not get on explore page you're only will you only get like 10 percent of your your followers that will see it and then and then it'll just the post will just like die it won't get pushed oh, anymore that's pretty brutal yeah when when i when i get a post removed i'll usually just like give up for two weeks and be like okay i'll take it i'll stop posting or like not post as often because yeah. it's just yeah. not worth the effort when you're if you're if you make something and you know it's good and it's like deserves much more engagement yep it's not worth posting if you know it's your shadow band so i usually just take some time off and it usually i it makes it makes me feel like that time passes by faster and it's less frustrating to have to deal with that so you just like forget about instagram for a couple of weeks and then start again and it's it's usually fine when when you start back up it's like nothing happened Mm -hmm. yeah it's a it's a crazy algorithm though it's just weird yeah. how it works yeah most algorithms are pretty crazy and uh yeah the, um, the the issue mostly is how obscure they are and uh that we don't know how they work that's um that's a problem that i've been having with algorithm that i mean not, not just me a lot of people uh are um are kind of against algorithms and the their the, the overuse of algorithms on so many mm -hmm. websites uh, youtube especially but uh, twitter also and um instagram now uh because because of how obscure the, they they their workings are it's uh, you don't never really know what's what's going on what's the frequency yeah that is, that is good and they always posting. change they're always updated yeah. So. yeah 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 that's also a bad thing you think you you can uh figure it out but they change it uh really often and uh, yeah usually but, there are some basic things that definitely help your engagement like like for example time that people spend looking at your post that's that's like if if you have a post that like takes a while to read through or like has a lot of things on it and it's and it's like good regardless then it usually does well like i remember the other day there's this um i don't know if you've seen it on my page but it's like oreo it's an oreo oh, yeah. game and it's yeah. like all the different combinations of oreo yeah i've seen it Pretty yeah good. and so when i saw that meme i was like I spent so much time just look on it because I was like reading through all the different options mm -hmm. and immediately I was like, damn, I spent so much time on this. And then immediately clicked and I was like, oh, this, this is a, this is like a good, it's a funny meme. It's a funny picture. It's like a good picture, but it's also really good for the art, for the algorithm. Oh, I see. So, it, so immediately I like copied it and, and reposted it and it ended up doing like really well. Nice. Cause because so many people just like Instagram sort of tracks the amount of time that people look at your post. I did that's not why, know that. That's why videos and slide posts also tend to do better. Oh. Because people spend more time looking at it. And what Instagram ultimately wants is for people to spend more time on their app. So oh, yeah, for if sure. your post helps them do that, then they're going to promote it. Uh huh. I'm oh, giving away some trade secrets. That's interesting. I did not yeah. know that at all. Yeah. I wonder if it's the same on Facebook. I have no idea. I know it it's might the same. be. I mean, I Facebook know it's the same and Instagram on YouTube. are the same company, so. I yeah. I know it's like that on YouTube. That's for sure. They even but they even tell you that uh, it's the most important metric. It's how how many t uh, the number of minutes that people spend uh, watching your videos is is much more important than the number of people that watch your videos and the, or the number of videos that get watched the number of minutes is uh, clearly the most important metric and yeah. so uh and so instagram is tracks the time oh that's uh that is kind of surprising i did not expect that but okay that's uh 
That's good to know. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, <laughs> it, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I can't prove it to you, but I have pretty yeah, good evidence yeah. with that's some the, posts. That's the thing with algorithms. There's, yeah, there's n people are never really sure, and it changes all the time. Uh, so it's that might really be why Vine sort of went down because you. What can you do with seven seconds of a video? You know. Oh, uh, I don't know. There's uh, there's so many Vine compilations that are successful on YouTube and shit that yeah. I guess that people were uh, spending time because the Vine compilations on YouTube are usually 20 minutes long, something like yeah. that. So uh, there's a lot of different Vines. And also you can just look at the... Some Vines are like better every loop. Like you you leave it on loop and you That's watch true. it uh, yeah. again and again. And, uh, uh, like the... Um, like the good old uh, Newgrounds animations of old. I don't know if you... You're probably too young to know Newgrounds, but... Uh, it was I know Newgrounds. I know Newgrounds. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it was a site that was before YouTube, and it was Flash animations, and... Uh, yeah, most, I remember. Most, most of them were, uh, were loopable, and they were made so people uh, could watch them on loop. And, um, yeah... That was... Uh, that was also... I mean, I think it's... I think it still exists. Newgrounds? I think, yeah. Yeah, it's still it's still on here. I, I like just Googled it. Um huh. I don't know if like there's a lot of people that watch this. Okay, the the daily videos, the the top um videos of the day, like they have a they have sort of a a ranking. Uh -huh. Um it has eleven thousand views. That's the most viewed daily video. <laughs> so it's not doing very well. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's still um, it's still up. That's something. I mean, yeah, I that's guess, pretty nice. I guess MySpace is still up too. Yeah, the the views probably stack up over time, but if your most viewed oh, video in one day oh, is just yeah, eleven thousand, it's, it's eleven thousand daily views. Okay. Yeah, but that's still really that's little. Still, yeah, that's still really low. Because the fifth video has 800 views. Hmm. Yeah, okay. And it's the top five of the whole day. Like, Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They have more movies, too. They have, like, very long animations. That's crazy, because animations take so much time to make. Even a, even a one-minute animation will, can take up to a month to make. So um... Yeah. It's, uh, or maybe do you it's like, like this, uh, do you like watching anime? Uh, not really. No, I tried a bunch of times, and I never found an anime that I really liked. Uh, so Which I, ones have you seen? Oh, I've seen. Of course, I've seen the Naruto. Uh -huh. uh, uh, what was the one with the cards? Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Pokemon, obviously, and uh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, and stuff like that. Uh, but um, also mo more obscure stuff that I don't remember the name of, and I never really found an anime that that I really wanted to watch like until the end, like that made me want to uh, watch all the episodes of. Um, yeah, I never ne never an, an anime really hooked me up. Uh, the well. Dragon Ball and like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon and all the ones you mentioned are like really long ones too. Oh and yeah. And like Naruto and stuff. So they have like seasons on seasons on seasons. Isn't isn't that the case for most ones though? Cuz uh, a lot of them come from uh from manga and there mm -hmm. are like uh, adaptations of of manga and I yeah. see and when I see those mangas they like Oh, uh, the tome number one hundred and seventy-four just uh, got out, and uh, it's stuff like this. So yeah, that's, long. that's true. A lot of mangas are are like really long. I most of animes I'd say are pretty long. I haven't really seen. I haven't really watched that many anime shows, but I I do like them. Like, there's a few that I've liked. Like, Death Note is like so good. Okay. And One Punch is also like one that I would recommend. And those are shorter, like they're they're only a couple. Well, Death Note's like only I don't know how many seasons, but it's it's not that long. Okay. And it's definitely not like twelve seasons or anything. It's like maximum 
30 episodes or something like that. Okay. And that one, that that's like, that's like Death Note is like the, to me is like the breaking bad of animes. Oh, really? Interesting. Yes. It's like they got the best plot ever. And it's just like the, once you watch it, it's like nothing's ever the same again. It's like just the best, the best thing I've seen anime wise. Okay, uh, I guess I'll try this one then. I've heard and about it's it. Like a, but... It's just like a really good long movie. Okay. So I definitely recommend that one. And then One Punch is like a f- more funny. It's mm-hmm. like a funny kind of anime. But it, okay. the action scenes are really good and they're really fun to watch too. And it's not like... There's not too much of a plot to follow, so it's it's more of like a lighter watch. It's more like something for fun to watch. Kind of like a sitcom. Mm, no, it's not. It's not like a sitcom because it's not like a group of friends hanging around or anything like that. Okay. It's it's action based, but it's about like this superhero. Mm-hmm. And well, his thing is that he. He punches all his enemies just once and then he defeats them. So he gets really bored and he's like, he's just like really, really frustrated because he wants to have like a challenging opponent, but he can't seem to find one. It's cool. That's an interesting premise. I didn't know. I, I mean, I've, I've seen a couple of memes uh, with that dude, but I didn't know that was the um, that was the the base of the show. Like this dude who's, who's bored because no enemy is challenging to him. That's funny. It's cool because the then the enemies get stronger, but it, like he still beats them. But it's really cool to see like how big the the enemies can get. Every single episode is like a different enemy. Okay. And they just get more out of hand and like more humongous, and he still like just defeats them. But the fights, the fights get really cool to watch. Okay. Because sometimes, so because he knows he can just kill them immediately, he he will like not kill them so that they put up a good fight, so he can like have a little bit of fun. Uh-huh. And so like it's really cool to watch that. Nice. Okay, maybe. I don't want to give any spoilers. Yeah, though. good. Uh, I, I... There's really not that much of a plot though. It's mostly just cool, fun things to watch. You know. Okay, I guess I'll check it out. Yeah, um, I, I do watch um, a fair amount of, of uh, Western animation, though. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I know I've never really found an anime that really holds my breath. Yeah. Talking about Newgrounds, I remember like the old days of animation with like Oni and G and mm-hmm. Ego Raptor. Yeah. And that dude who made the the, the old stick figure things, I love the stick figure shit. Uh huh. And um, yeah, but my favorite was always uh, David Firth, who made uh, who is famous for making uh, salad fingers, but made a, a lot of other stuff. Oh yeah, salad fingers was so good. I I watched that <laughs> so many times. <laughs> there was a it was a there was a show on YouTube. I think it was Oni NG or or Psychic Pebbles or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called Leo and Satan. That was one of my favorites. Oh, doesn't ring a bell. It was really funny. And now all those guys aren't really like they stopped sort of making animations. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult making animations on YouTube uh, because uh, it takes a lot of time, so you cannot post often. Yeah. And, uh, because of that, uh, the the algorithm is. Um, is like uh, leaving them in the, in the dust because it, it favors people who upload often. So um, a, a lot of people uh, uh, who uh, who take time for making videos uh, have a hard time like having success on YouTube, especially now. If I think it's becoming um, more and more uh, of a problem. It's probably one of the reasons why Vsauce stopped uploading. Because... Mm-hmm. Uh, he he usually he usually made like uh, one video uh, like every month or less than that, and he, yeah, uh, there were like a lot of work in in them, and um, and so uh, it's uh, the the algorithm started uh, going against this, and um, yeah, it's really difficult for uh, for people who are 
animators because there's a lot of work for uh, to make a good animation. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's not a good time for um, for animation. Yeah. I know they they tried in the latest YouTube Rewind to uh, put a spotlight on animators, but uh, it's just a hand wave, and uh, yeah. the, the problem will will continue. Obviously. Yeah, that's true. Maybe uh, maybe a different um, video platform in the future will uh, solve that that issue. I don't know. Yeah, pa Patreon was sort of trying to help with that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But it it didn't get that popular. Yeah, I'm not surprised. But um, yeah, sometimes they upload again. the The stick figure guy uploaded a a really good video. I think it was uh, about a year ago. It was uh, it was really long and it was really cool. Uh, animation versus YouTube. It was uh, it was uh, called. Oh, cool. Is it is is he one of the the ones that like where the sort of the stick figure like pops out of the screen that it's yep. being made in and then starts fighting with like the mouse clicker and yeah, stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah, those were cool. It was really yeah. creative. The the gifs were shared all the time on 4chan back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were some really long ones. That was pretty cool. Uh, although, uh, there are people who make short animations who are starting to get like some um, some traction recently. There's a French guy called uh, KK, uh, mm -hmm. uh, aka KK Flipknot. And uh, he makes like these really short animations. And uh, he started uh, making animations on the DSi with a game called Flip Note. And, uh, and I think he still uses his DS. Uh, and uh, he makes these, these like really, really short animations that are kind of like loops. And uh, they're kind of the divine equivalent of, uh, of animations, basically. Oh, interesting! He's getting quite big recently. Uh, I've seen him. You know, I see. I see him all the time on Reddit, Tumblr, and, and stuff. And uh, his stuff gets uh, shared on YouTube, and and, and uh, he gets uh, he gets mad views. This is cool. It's probably on Instagram too. I've se I've seen cha I've saw a channel once where um, it was like this guy. He he was an animator, like professional animator, but on YouTube. He would show off all his. Um, he had like flip books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen. I've seen this one. Awesome. Yeah. That w that guy was really cool. Because he he did a lot of animations for like movies, and then he would get flip books from the movies, and show them out on YouTube and stuff. It was cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's um, th this must be really difficult because it's it's the kind of thing that takes a lot of time. For a, a, a result that will be really short and that will be uh, seen in an instant, you know, and and people are going to scroll and shit. It's not yeah. exactly the kind of thing that you that you want to follow the creator and watch their stuff all the time. I mean, I guess some people do, uh, but it's um, it's 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 it's, it's going to be hard for these people because it's um, it doesn't really hook you. You know, you see the thing and you smile and then you see something else and you forget about it um yeah and, that's and true. yet and yet it takes a lot of practice and, uh, and a lot of work to make these things yeah it takes so much work and time yep like the uh, like the claymation stuff that also is a uh, yeah like uh, wallace and gromit and stuff like that yeah some people can do this kind of shit and, and be successful, but it's rare. I mean, I th I'm thinking about the show uh, Robot Chicken, for example. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's few and far in between. And, uh, yeah. Because it's, uh, it's difficult work. It's really difficult work. Yeah. Uh, they, usually, they usually mix sort of the different art forms. They'll like put a little claymation, but then also make like a video effects and stuff. Mm. in order to like make it go faster mm -hmm. but a lot of um what's his name the the director of um the dog the isle of dogs yeah like a lot of his movies are claymation based 
Oh, I, I didn't see I Love Dogs. I should have watched it. So many people have recommended it to me. It's a nice you, uh, movie. You, you remind me of it. Uh, I really wanted to see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a I've great heard, movie. I really enjoyed it. I've heard a lot of great things about it. I, I really should watch it sooner. And um, if you notice, the, in the name of the, the name of the movie's Isle of Dogs, like Island... Yeah. But if you say it really quickly, it sounds like you're saying, I love dogs. Yep, I noticed, yeah. Which that's is that's... also, like, part of the thing in the movie. Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool... Uh, uh, that's probably the, the kind of thing that gets lost in translation, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool thing. Yeah. And I love dogs, so I, I, sh I would probably love the movie. Yeah. Who doesn't? There's so many people. I love dogs. Yeah, there are so many. There, are, there are some. There are some people uh, I know who don't uh, like dogs. A lot of people are some psychopaths. You mean? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are, are are kind of afraid of dogs for yeah, reasons true. that are that may or may not be rational, mm -hmm. rational, but and um, yeah, uh, a lot of people. Um, I've I've met a few people who are like hardcore cat persons. And who thinks that our cat, cats are the superior pet and dogs are stupid and <laughs> shit? And uh, but I don't trust them. I don't. I don't trust people who don't who who don't like dogs. It's uh, it's a red flag for me. Yeah, it's definitely a red flag. It's probably they're probably psychos. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's weird. I mean, I don't hate cats, but dogs are kind of superior in every way. It's. Uh, it's obvious, I mean, or, or it's not even an opinion at this point. It's, uh, <laughs> it's objective. Objectively, dogs are better. Yeah, clearly. The one thing that I would say about cats is that they require less attention. Yeah. So if you're like working all the time or if you're like a student or something and you want to you wanna just like have something to pet. Mm -hmm. it's probably they're like less maintenance dogs are more needy yeah i'm not sure it's really less maintenance though because uh they leave hair everywhere and uh the, their their litter has to be changed or it stinks the whole house up mm -hmm. uh, like i i don't know and they they keep breaking things you know like True. they like to throw things on the ground and shit and, but you uh, can't you can just leave them be for yeah. like days and and they won't die of loneliness or anything yeah yeah but i've met i've also encountered some cats that are really dog-like and they're like really cuddly and like not not whatsoever like other cats or like most cats yeah and it's 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 uh it's a funny thing that uh uh, uh um i don't remember who but i i, I heard that that observation recently is that a lot of people um, a lot of, uh, um, often uh, when they want to, uh, to talk about really great cat they they call it dog like you know yeah so uh, it's uh, it's uh, it shows how dogs are superior <laughs> it's clear it's just blatantly obvious just another piece of evidence and rats are rats superior to dogs um I wouldn't say so no. Uh, but they are quite similar. There's a lot of uh, similarities between rats and, and dogs. That is uh, why I started uh, having rats. I, um, I wanted uh, pets at home, but I, I, I have a small house, uh, mm -hmm. a small apartment, and um, I wanted something that is good for a small space that you don't have to take out uh, all the time. Um, yeah. Uh, that you can have a that, that can have a good life like without a garden, and uh, so um, I I asked people um, on on 4chan and stuff like uh, what was the um, a good alternative to dogs, but that was compatible with small spaces and and stuff like that, and ninety percent of people say rats are the best option if you love dogs but can't have a dog. Uh, rats are really dog like in in many ways. And um, and and they they you know you can leave them in in their cage most of the time. You yeah. Don't have to, you don't have to let them out that much. 
That's um, really cool. I never thought about that. And so, um, yeah, that, that's why I started having rats. It's because uh, a lot of people t told me that they were like little dogs. And, uh, and I, I agree with that. Um, they are very dog-like in, in, in many respects. That, that's why I, uh, I'm so glad that I started um, having, having rats. The, the wanna, there are a couple drawbacks. Uh, the biggest drawback uh, for, for rats in my opinion, is the cage. Uh, it's a, a rat cage is expensive. It takes a lot of space, and you gotta clean it all the time, and it's difficult to clean. It's a pain. Uh, but uh, and also their lifespans are pretty short, um, so you you lose them all the time. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, uh, they're pretty great pets. Yeah. Better than cats for sure. Yes. Anything's better than cats, I guess. <laughs> I would have, I would have a cat. I think they're like, it's nice to have a dog and a cat. Mm. Yeah, it's better. Anything's better than no pet, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pets are such good companions. Yeah, yeah, they really are. I know a few people who don't have pets, and that's that's so weird to me. Yeah, that's, uh, that's strange, you know. And like when you're a little kid, you always want to have a pet. I never, yeah. I didn't have a pet when I was young. I had a pet rabbit for like three, four years, but yeah. then I never had one up until like two years ago. Hmm. And like, I always wanted a pet my whole life. When I was uh, uh, little, I had a goldfish for a few years. And um, and then um, I mean my family ho always had dogs uh, and and cats so there were the family pets so they were kind of um, I spent a lot of time with them especially the dogs not a big fan of the cats um, but um, yeah when I when I started living by myself and there was no no pets in the house that was so weird like it really was something missing in my life. And um, these little the the, little, the the rats bring me such joy on a daily basis and entertainment and uh, company yeah. that uh, yeah I wouldn't want to live a, a petless life. Uh, people yeah. who do are kind of weird to me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dogs are awesome. They're, they're 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 my favorite. If I had the space, I would have had dogs. Yeah, they're they're like humans' best companion. So yeah, and all humans love them. We we sort of made them to be like that too. Oh yeah, exactly. Dogs did not exist. We created them. Yeah. So when you say it's like meant, if anyone says it's like meant to be that dogs and humans should get along, I, it was not meant to be. We forced them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the case with all pets. Uh, the domestication uh, is, uh, and it's the same with a lot of uh, cattle and uh, and uh, farm animals. You know. Yeah. Um, it's the the taming a, a wild beast um, is really difficult, and to uh, really have a, a, a domestic animal, it takes generations. Mm -hmm. It takes many generations. It's uh, you don't just uh, you don't just get along with a with a wild uh, animal. I mean, you can like for an hour, but on the long term, it's really difficult to uh, to have a. a a, a wild animal uh, as a pet. I know a few people who like um, have one a wild animals as pets. I know um, I know a, a, a dude who, uh, who who tried to tame um, a wild fox, and uh, and I, I know a girl who uh, who has a wild uh, pigeon as a as a pet too. But it's 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 rare and it's it's yeah it's difficult. It's, yeah, it's hard. And yeah, dogs did not exist. We 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 basically invented them by uh, by breeding uh, the most uh, docile wolves, and uh, generation after generation, they they became like dogs. Yeah, their but, whole uh, life is a lie. <laughs> yeah, but they're basically uh, dogs are basically um, genetically they're identical to wolves. You know? Yeah, they it's are. It's just, and it's just like, selective breeding for many generations. That. Yeah, and like huskies are like the closest to yeah. the wolves and stuff. Yeah. 
uh, his keys and uh, Alex can mute mm-hmm. pretty, uh, pretty great and um, it's um, it's good to have them as pets uh, because a closer a dog is to a wolf the better its health oh really Espe- yeah especially in the long run yeah yeah there's so many oh, dogs uh, especially um, pugs uh, are I have so many health problems and, they um, look like a health problem like the, the yeah, way they look. yeah 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 <laughs> and uh yeah they are they are really uh, a lot of people are are um, you know starting like a movement to uh, stop breeding them mm-hmm. or you know uh mix them with other uh breeds to uh to like uh stop that uh and uh, there's there's a lot of dogs uh, that are really unhealthy from birth uh, yeah. because of how because they've been modified like too much yeah and uh, yeah pugs are one of the most glaring examples but there are many breeds like that yeah that's sad yeah yeah it is it's it's and it's becoming a, a, a year after year it's becoming more of a problem because of um the, the selective breeding doesn't stop and and also there's like inbreeding and uh, yeah it's a shitty situation yeah and um, that's why um, mutts are often much healthier uh, because uh, their genes are uh, they're like are mixed big. genes yeah and uh, that's that that makes a better quality dog yeah that's that's what's weird of uh, uh, about the argument of like people not wanting to like mix races of humans and stuff and you be like secluded from all the other races or like you know how parents don't want their like white child to like date a black girl or something like that like that's that doesn't make first it's like just plain old racism but secondly yeah. it doesn't make any rational sense because it like makes better humans like you have less health problems and it, it'll like it's for the better of humanity of anything too yeah, yeah, I know a lot. Um, uh, the most people I know who are like that, it's because of religious reasons. Like, I know yeah. a lot of Jews and Arabs, uh, like Muslims, who don't want their uh, their son or their daughter or to date uh, a non-Jew or a, non- or yeah. a non-Muslim, you know. Uh, it's not so much about race than it is about uh, religious uh, That's things. That's true. And I guess that these white people... Uh, I guess it's uh, it must be a thing like in America. Uh, yeah, in America it's a bit more common. And uh, and it's probably uh, because they don't want uh, their uh, their sons to date some someone who is not a Christian. I, yeah, I suppose. But uh, but yeah, I know a lot of black people who uh, who don't want to to date uh, other races too. Yeah. Um, the the most of the ones who seem to not give a shit are Asians. I don't really know. Uh, I I know a lot of Asians. Uh, yeah, they they don't seem to care about this. But yeah. uh, but also they outnumber us so much that they it's it's probably they don't they don't give a shit. It's normal. <laughs> yeah, like, there's probably well, just so many. Yeah, I think more than half of the people on Earth are Asians. So uh, wow, like one and a half billion Chinese, one and a half billion Indians. Yeah. And then there are there are a lot of Indonesia is a big country, Japan. So, so the per- percentage might, wise, it might just be the same amount of people. It's just that we see it more because there's there's a larger population. So yeah. when we can we we compare it to say the American population or something, it seems that they're dating more more like out of their culture or something. You were right. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but it makes sense. It could be. You know, you never know. It's like statistics. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's where although that for it 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 varies from race to race, from a uh, race to race, from species to species, uh, and uh, inbreeding is um, is worse for dogs than it is for humans. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's like for example rats. Uh, don't almost not suffer from inbreeding, oh. um, and uh, because they're um, because of how they, they because of their their DNA the DNA is different from uh, from animal to animal. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not fundamentally different, but uh, like the number of genes. I think it depends on, on your number of genes. Uh, or or uh, I, I mean, I say genes, but I mean chromosomes. Uh, the number of chromosomes that you have varies wildly from from species to species, oh. and uh, and uh, and and from animal to animal, and uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, especially in fish, like there are some fish that I have like two chromosomes, and there are some fish that I have four thousand, um, and uh, we have uh, we have forty we have forty six, and I think that the, the more chromosomes that you have the more resistant you are to inbreeding or it's the other way around i don't know but um but yeah it's it's worse for dogs than it is for us mm -hmm. and um I, I, and some of it is actually beneficial i remember uh reading a um a, a biology and, and genetics article uh a couple of years ago that said that uh having children with your cousins is actually uh, safe and is actually safer uh, genetically than having uh, children with a stranger. Oh, really? Yeah, because there uh, it's it is it was really complicated and I didn't understand all of it. But there's a medical reason that says that um, uh, if uh, if if you don't have the same parents, but if there is some uh, genetic. Uh, um, you know similarities like uh, like yeah the, your cousins first cousins it's actually really healthy to have children with your first cousins uh, and and it doesn't it's it doesn't have any of the problems that inbreeding normally has uh, that like if you have uh, children with your with one of your parents or with you, one of your siblings that it is really dangerous mm -hmm. but but with cousins uh, like if there's an, if there is no parent in common but grandparents like one or two uh it is actually good for the genes for oh, some wow. reason that i don't remember but yeah it's weird it's weird okay so everyone who's listening right now go fuck your cousin <laughs> all all my followers whoever's listening to this podcast right now it's okay to fuck your cousin you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, it's it's not really a it's not really a wild uh, thing. Uh, I think fifteen percent of marriages in the world are between cousins. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I read that Damn. recently. I read that recently, the, and it kind of blew in my mind. In the U.S., or you mean like in the south of the U.S., or like worldwide? <laughs> I think it was worldwide. Uh, I don't remember the exact figure, but it was like a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, here in France, it's relatively common, especially in some communities, like uh, uh, like Christians do it a lot. Yeah, like uh, we were we are um, an over overwhelmingly atheist uh, country. But we have mm -hmm. a we have a Christian minority, and they they marry their cousins a lot, and um, yeah, it's 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 illegal and shit in in most of the world because it's not it's yeah. not it's technically not incest. Yeah, um, I think I, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, yeah, a huge number of marriages in the in the whole world are between cousins. It's uh, it surprised me, but uh, yeah, that seems like a high amount. Yeah, I think it was like fifteen percent, or maybe it was f of fake stuff. But I don't think so. I think it was from a from a legitimate medical publication that I, I saw that. I I'm gonna try to find that. We need, we need like a third, a third person in the podcast, like an assistant to look up <laughs> sources, like, like Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, oh, that's, that is wonderful. I'm on the Wikipedia page and it says cousin marriage is marriage between cousins. It's, Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It 
is estimated that 20% of all couples worldwide are first cousins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in the, in the Wikipedia article, it says that worldwide, more than 10% of marriages are between first or second cousins. So, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, but it definitely varies by country. Like, yeah. Um, like Brazil has a 4% or something like that. It's much lower. Mm -hmm. According to Professor Robin Fox of Rutgers University, 80% of marriages in history may have been between second cousins or closer. Whoa. Mm. Yep. Uh, yeah. And it's only banned in like some states of the US. Yep. And then in China and then somewhere else in like the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's but it's legal like everywhere else. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. Oh, there's a list. There's a list of um percentages. But it's oh, it's only for the country of India. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's quite common in uh, in oh, India, is, and it's and it's legal there. That's right? cool. It's good to check your sources. Yeah, it's always a it's always a good idea. People should do that more often, especially yeah, now definitely. with the internet that it's so easy to do. Yeah. So, what got you to start doing this podcast? Um, uh, do you like watching other podcasts? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what that's what got me to, got me to start. It's um, uh, it's another podcast that made me want to do mine. Uh, called the official podcast by mm -hmm. by Critical and his friends. Um, I, I, I you probably know Critical. And, yes, I know. And uh, have you have you listened to the official podcast? I've I think I've like seen it. I don't listen to it all the time. But I've I've probably heard some some of the episodes, and um, yeah, I, I listened uh, already to quite a lot of podcasts before. But uh, they were all fiction podcasts, you know, like Welcome to Night Vale is probably yeah, the, most, yeah. the, the most famous, and uh, uh, um, some French ones also that you have probably never heard about. But um, yeah, it was my first time listening to a non-fiction podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, also at the time, I discovered the H three podcast that was oh, yeah. that was also an inspiration for me. I love and, the H three podcast. And um, yeah, uh, it was kind of like I, I didn't think a lot. I just li was listening to the official podcast, and I th thought I want to do this. And so I started. I asked uh, a few of my uh, friends who are more or less in the meme world. Uh, and so I, I asked, I remember the first person I asked was shitpost bot 5000 mm -hmm. And he was like my second um, guest. Uh, and uh, also uh, one of my friends called uh, Red Bard, who was also known as, as Bootleg Stuff, was a big bootleg page on Facebook, I think the biggest. Uh -huh. and, um, and yeah, I, I started, I liked it. And uh, it's really it's really the official podcast that made me want to do this. I love how they do interviews, and um, I wanted to do the same, but uh, with people who are like more or less uh, in the meme world, in the in the meme culture. Yeah. And so, because um, yeah, and so I started, and uh, since then I, I discovered more nonfiction podcasts, and um, I, I listen to podcasts more and more as time goes by. So I, I really enjoy making one. Uh, recently, my favorite have been uh, the Anthropocene reviewed by John Green uh, when uh, he reviews uh, like it's about once a month uh, two things that are specific to uh, the human era of the of the planet and he gives uh, a, a, a note on a five star scale uh, it's a really really good podcast I love it uh, I love That's how cool. he observes things and um, the, the his his, uh, his view on things um, and uh, another one that I really love is My Dad Wrote a Porno. Oh, I heard. I I started listening to the first episode of that one. It is so funny. I, yeah, I it's funny. I rarely yeah. laughed 
that much. Like, <laughs> literally several times listening to it, I choked on my own laughter. Yeah, and it's really I, I, funny. I, it is incredibly funny. And they're just reading. They're just reading the book. It's yeah. not like they're doing anything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, their their comments uh, yeah. provide a lot of the fun, but the book itself is hilarious. Yeah, it's such and, a simple uh, idea. Yeah, they've they've just finished reading the fourth book recently. <laughs> it's 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 crazy good. It's crazy funny. So those are my my favorite recently: the official podcast, the Anthropocene reviewed, and uh, my dad wrote a porno, and. Um, I'm I'm always uh, I'm always um, wanting for more. Um, I rarely li- listen to a podcast that I hated. Um, I haven't tried any of the true crime stuff because it doesn't sound interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it doesn't it doesn't sound appealing to, to me. I, I but um, and I know it's like most famous and successful podcasts are like true crime investigations uh, about serial killers and and stuff. Yeah, um, but um, yeah, there was one podcast called Lore that I hated. It's this dude who's like masturbating on on shit. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, I uh, intellectually circle yeah, jerking yeah, 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 with yeah. himself on like um, paranormal stuff and uh, yeah. uh, spirituality and esoteric bullshit. <laughs> and it, it's oh it's horrible it, it was promising the first episode was good and then i listened to a few more episodes and i hated them so much oh there was uh there was one uh where he's like uh fanboying over some dude who made a um a, a, one of his uh, his tomb uh, he's made with a, a christian and also a freemason uh, stuff and uh there's a lot of symbols, but the symbols are all bullshit, and he calls them brilliant and so intelligent, and it's oh, <laughs> I really I hate lore. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, I've seen uh, I've seen that podcast sort of pop around, but I've never listened to it. I mostly listen to the H three podcast. That's the only one that I've sort of stuck through and listened to all of the episodes. Hmm. And when they come it's, out and stuff, I like watching them. It's not that good, though. I mean, in my opinion, yeah. Ethan is not a great host. He he he's not the best host. He he always like this, interrupts and like just yeah. Sometimes he's got scripted things that are a little awkward. Yeah. Oh yeah. But but I mean, I think he's pretty funny overall, and like it's enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, uh, but um, yeah, he could he could do much better with uh, I don't know he if he lacks practice or but he always is a little awkward and uh, yeah and I don't I don't like the way he interrupts his hosts and try to make himself the the star of the show yeah uh, but there are some episodes uh, I love especially uh, the episodes uh, with Jack's films and Eric uh, Big Money Salvia oh yeah those are funny. And the one with I dubs also was so good. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but uh, sometimes it's like the one with Bill Burr was like awkward. Oh, that from one start was unbearable. That was so oh, hard yeah. to watch. The one with Marquis Brownlee was so boring. Like, yeah. I, and I love MKBHD. I mm-hmm. watch his tech review with video all the time. Uh, he's one of my favorite tech YouTubers, and I watch a lot of tech stuff. Mm. But the uh, the podcast with him was so boring, so it's it's kind of hit and miss. Yeah. Um. Uh, the H three podcast and uh, some episodes are really good, but uh, Ethan is not a great host in my opinion. Yeah, I I like him for his memes mostly. You know, like yeah, he makes yeah, yeah. up and stuff. But it's not it's not a bad podcast by any means. It's yeah. Decent. Yeah. I like but, I liked it yeah. when um, Ethan Bradbury went on it. Ethan oh, yeah. and Mo. That was a good episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. That was surprising and pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, well, there was one with with Kim Star too. I think. I don't. I think he went. I I know he went on Kim Star's podcast or something like that. No. I, oh yeah. I I remember there was one episode of the H three podcast with Kim Star and it got censored by YouTube because he oh. revealed. 
he revealed secret uh, informations about 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 YouTube and shit. Oh really? It was, it, yeah, it was weird. Oh wow! Well, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't watch that one because I didn't never saw it. But but yeah, it's on um, it's on like it's on SoundCloud Twitch. and uh, yeah, and it's on SoundCloud and PodBay and um, yeah, uh, Audio Boom, I think. And I mean, all do, the classic are, stuff. Do you put this podcast on YouTube as well, or just SoundCloud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on YouTube, SoundCloud, and soon everywhere else, uh, iTunes and yeah, uh, Bod Bay and and shit. Uh, I was I, I I was supposed to do it in December, but I had money issues because put, putting a podcast online is is a little expensive. Uh-huh. So, uh, but I'm gonna start doing it uh, soon, really soon, in a few days. All my all the episodes will will go live uh, everywhere you can listen to podcasts, the Apple podcasts, and and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Yep, I'm cool. looking then forward I'll, to it. When it when this episode comes out, I'll tell all my followers to go. Cool. I hope they will like it. I hope they like it. It's my first podcast or anything like that that I've ever done. Well, you're uh, you're doing pretty good for a first timer. Do you, would you say I'm a good host? Uh, I guess, yeah. That's nice. Thanks. I'm gonna check out your YouTube channel because you you it looks like you have a lot of videos on here. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, there's there's quite a lot of videos. Yeah, I, I upload quite often. The rat videos look fun. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, let's leave it at that for today. Um, I'm going to do the outro. All right. So that was Mori Talk episode nine, the worst podcast on the internet. Uh, my guest is Find Me Offline. You can see his memes on Instagram. Uh, there will be a link in the description, of course. The official Mojito theme song is Groove Selector by Jred, also linked in the description. And uh, I'm looking forward for your uh, comments. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Peace! Nice.